I, you know, let's bring in Brandel Chambly of the Golf Channel. Brandel, if I, Nike said to Under Armour, we'll give you Rory McIlroy straight up for Jordan Spieth, what would they say? <laughs> uh, I think they'd say uh, no. Uh, I think they're probably both very happy with their choices. Uh, you know, at the end of the at the end of their careers, who's going to have more majors? Who's going to be more popular? You know, it it might be. Uh, you know, it might be that we're lucky that we've got two Arnold Palmer type players in this generation. Uh, you know, none of us ever thought we'd see another Jack Nicholas or anybody as popular as Arnold Palmer, but it certainly looks like it right now. Uh, Rory doesn't make many mistakes in the media center, and nor does Jordan Spieth, and they've won the last four major championships. So here we are again in a great spot. Is this what golf wants with the U.S. Open that we were talking about the course? Uh, that that it was a conversation. Everybody had an opinion on it. Now, granted, unbelievable finish, but should the course be in the conversation at the U.S. Open? No. I, I mean, other than being beautiful and uh, strategically uh, up to the talents of the players, no, it, it shouldn't be, and nor should the setup be um, dominating the conversation. It should be about the players. Every time we're talking about the course and the setup and the condition, we're not talking about the players. So, uh, you know, I, I know what the USG is trying to do. They're trying to go to new venues, and they're trying to show the world that you can conserve on various things, you know, um, maintenance and water. And But, no, the golf course was uh, horrific, and it was ugly. And in the end, we said it all week, it could very well boil down to a short putt at the last, which overrides perhaps four of the greatest shots hit in the history of the U.S. Open. Dustin Johnson, the drive and the five iron, Jordan Spieth's last two. Tell me four greater shots hit on the 18th hole of the U.S. Open. And in the end, you talk about a missed four-footer, and nobody can say for sure that he didn't do all that was asked of him on that four-footer. And it hit three pieces of Poana, because it certainly and it certainly bounced plenty. And, and you know, we're, I guess we're going to talk about going for an eagle to try to win it outright or – play it safe what was he trying to play it safe or was he actually just saying hey i'm going to go to win this outright instead of take my chances with the playoff today well unfortunately he didn't go to the media center so i guess we'll never know uh or maybe someone will ask him later um and and we'll get some closure there we would have loved to have heard that uh it looked to me like he was trying to cozy it down there and it just got away from him jordan spieth hit his with dead weight dead weight uh, he died it right at the hole, and he had to tap in. Uh, I think everybody was nervous as hell on every single putt out there. I've never seen Jordan Spieth back off from so many putts coming down the stretch. Um, you know, it was just a, an unfortunate subplot, or actually maybe the major plot, to this U.S. Open. Um, it, it was really – I talked to Jordan's manager, um, a fellow by the name of David Winkle. I talked to him this morning already, and he said that he was – he didn't go to the media center because he was. it wasn't that he was angry. He was just so sad. He didn't think he could talk. And, uh, you know, he, I, I don't know. Do you respect that? I guess so. Um, he earned the right to be in that chair at the closing ceremonies. There were 140 or 50 players that would have given their, you know, their eye teeth to be in that seat. He earned the right. But I get it. Uh, to have it decided like that was uh, was unfortunate. And then you got the double bogey by Spieth. I mean, imagine the headline if Spieth had lost it uh, and, and Dustin Johnson somehow had uh, had proven to be the winner here. What would we be saying about the future of golf? Would it be Dustin Johnson we'd be talking about instead of Jordan Spieth today? Well, I, you know, I've said it forever. Dustin Johnson is not going anywhere but straight to the Hall of Fame. It's, uh, you know, for Jordan, when you watch Jordan, he handles himself with amazing class. And he hits a lot of great shots, but it usually takes till Sunday night for us to go, wow. Um, the first swing of the golf club with Dustin on Thursday morning, you're just like, I've never seen anything like that. You know, it's different than Tiger. It's different than Phil or VJ or Ernie. It's just, you're just, you're just struck by how athletic he makes golf look. Uh, at some point, Dustin's going to win major championships. This is four of them that have gotten away from him, which yeah. speaks to his talent but it also speaks to his inability to control what, what you have to control in a major championship. It boils down to uh, simply that. But you're right. I mean, we saw, we saw Brandon Grace make a debacle at 16, uh, a double bogey there. We saw 
Jason Day do it earlier. We saw uh, Dustin Johnson doing it the last. Uh, you know, there were train wrecks all over that place. Um, it, it was, again, just unfortunate. Uh, that's that's the way the golf course was set up. Uh, we're talking to Brandel Ch- uh, Chambly of the Golf Channel. Yeah, you say train wreck, and, of course, you had a train track running right through it, so it seemed only <laughs> apropos there. So now you got Spieth going to the British Open. Uh, that course... Uh, St. Andrews, the likelihood. I know that he'll be, uh, he would be considered the favorite, he and Rory, but um, what kind of odds do you got here? Well, that course is a, is a, is a great driver's golf course. It, you know, it, it favors bombers. You've got to get past the pot bunkers. Tiger could drive it past the pot bunkers. Louis Oosthuizen, the last time he played there, drove it past the pot bunkers. So did John Daly, and nobody's won this event there besides Louis Oosthuizen and Tiger and John Daly in the last 20 years. It's, it's, it's about length off of the tee, uh, and then what you do from there. Jordan Spieth yesterday, uh, the last person to drive at that short and win the U.S. Open was Corey Pavin. Oh, boy. I'm not, he's, he's, he's longer than Corey Pavin, yeah. but that's a telling statistic. He was 60, 68 in driving distance and won 75 guys. So can he get past those bump, pot bunkers? I, I, you know, we'll see. He's figured out a way to sort of, in a cunning way, work his round, way around lack of dominant length. But you go into the Open Championship and you got Rory, you got Louis, you got Bubba, uh, you got Dustin Johnson. Um, you know, you've got Brandon Grace who just popped up, uh, you know, on the leaderboard. But when you start to look at what he's done at St Andrews, you, you can't you can't overlook him. And he's got phenomenal length. So I think Jordan's going to have a harder time of it at St. Andrews. Is it good for golf that uh, Tiger isn't the headline? Nobody moves the needle like Tiger. I don't, you know, it's, it's great for golf that we have two very popular and dominating players that have come to the forefront in Tiger's absence. But we'll never see anybody galvanize interests like Tiger Woods did. We'll never see it. I don't think we'll ever see that again. Yeah, uh, Tiger's going to be playing in the British Open, right? That, like, I'm, I'm assuming the 76, he's going to view it as a positive and a building block here and a stepping stone and all those things, normal cliches. Yeah, <laughs> yes. He'll be there, of course. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, whether or not he's got a semblance of a golf game is a is another question. He made that golf course look easy, but but it's not. You know, you end up in the heather, you end up in the pot bunkers, uh, you end up 90 feet away after you hit it in the heather and the pot bunkers. Um, so, you know, he's uh, he's in a rebuilding state, and is he healthy enough mentally and physically to do all that and compete in major championships? I said uh, at the beginning of the year he should go away for a year or for however long until he's at his home club not thinking about his golf swing and shooting 64 every day, which will pretty much what every tour player is when they're at their home golf club. They're not at home working on their swing, shooting 72s and 3s and 4s. They're shooting 64s and 3s. You know when you're ready to go out on tour. And, uh, and in the meantime, he's, he's cluttering up the field, and, uh, and it's, it's not fun to watch. Good to talk to you this week. Uh, thank you for your contributions, and safe travels back. Well, thank you, Dan. Always nice talking to you. Talk to you later. All right, Brandel Chambly, Golf Channel.